Welcome back, my fellow DeFi explorers. On today's episode of How to DeFi the System, we're going to be going over Ethereum, explaining what it is, purpose, how it revolutionized cryptocurrency to create blockchain 2.0, and just give a little bit of a breakdown on why it's so special and why potentially you should be invested in the ecosystem. Now, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything I'm sharing is just information to properly equip you with the knowledge to move forward in this digital age. So let's discover how Ethereum works and why it's so revolutionary. To understand Ethereum, you first need to know how the internet works today. At the moment, when you give your personal information, like your name and address, to a company online, that information is stored on their computer system in a server. All that information is stored on hundreds of different servers, both companies and governments, your name, your phone number, bank balances, credit card records, email messages, text messages, medical records, photos, the list is endless. All around you, there's a huge invisible network of computer servers filled to the brim with our information. Most of these computer systems are operated by big technology companies like Microsoft and Google, which run on behalf of these companies that you do business with. This current way of doing things is convenient, but it has big downsides. First of all, there's high fees with running these types of systems, which are passed on to you, the consumer. Second, your personal information in these systems is vulnerable to hacking. Hacking happens all the time because each server acts like a big target that's packed full of valuable customer information. All companies face this issue and they're in a never ending race with the hackers. In 2013, a programmer named Vitalik Buterin and others created a new technology called Ethereum to change how the internet works. Ethereum is revolutionary because for the first time it allows online computer systems to run without using any third party like Google. Not needing a third party to store and transfer information has a lot of benefits. Without middlemen, computer systems become cheaper to run and also harder to shut down. Plus, your personal information can become more private because companies no longer store it forever on their servers. So you're probably getting to see why Ethereum is such a game changer. So what is Ethereum? Let's talk about it and its unique and revolutionary protocols. Instead of using the computer system of a big company like Google, Ethereum lets software applications run on a network of many private computers, a decentralized system. Company computers and cloud servers are replaced with a large decentralized network of many small computers that are run by volunteers all around the world. So if you scroll through the App Store and you see a long list of applications that rely on big companies to run them and to store information, even your choice of apps is controlled by these third parties like Apple and Google. Companies don't like an app, it won't be allowed in the App Store. Ethereum is doing the opposite. It wants to remove third parties from how you access and use applications. In short, it puts the community of users in charge. The big idea behind Ethereum is that anybody can use this new decentralized network to create and run decentralized applications. No permission is needed because third parties are no longer required. Think of Ethereum as a technology platform that allows anybody to run applications on its global network. Because these applications no longer use decentralized servers, they are known as decentralized applications or dApps. Incredibly, Ethereum is not controlled by Vitalik and his team or any other person, company, or government. It's run by its community of users. And that's important. Users are located all around the world and volunteer with their computers or mining rigs to help run the Ethereum network. Information on this network is sent directly from person to person instead of from person to company to person. This is known as a P2P or peer-to-peer -peer system. It means there's no central control. What's amazing is that none of the users in the Ethereum community need to know each other for this system to work. You can use the Ethereum system online without needing to meet or even trust any other person. Ethereum's vision is to create a world computer, a huge network of many private computers that run all future internet applications without any third parties. Ethereum is reinventing how the internet works. It's removing power and control from big tech companies and it's putting them into your hands. So, how does it work? Now that you know what it is and why it exists, let's take a deeper dive. Imagine two people are sending each other messages on a smartphone. Traditionally, the two would use messages like WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype. Once sent, the message actually goes from the sender to a server and then to the receiver. Because companies control traditional messaging apps, they also control and store all the messages. 
This can come a problem if the servers are hacked. Now imagine two people use a decentralized Ethereum messaging app instead. The Ethereum system is not run by a company, but by a network of independent private computers around the world. When someone hits send, the message goes from the sender to the Ethereum network and from there to the receiver. The best part is that your message is hidden from the network through cryptographic technology. Even though Ethereum uses global public network computers, only the sender and receiver can see the message. The information that's being sent is hidden from everyone else through strong computer code encryption. The two people sending messages would not notice any difference between traditional centralized apps and the new decentralized apps. Decentralized apps work automatically without any middleman because they use smart contracts. Smart contracts put agreed upon rules into computer code and then enforce them automatically. They work like a vending machine, which is programmed to enforce rules automatically. Put in 50 cents, no soda. You put in a dollar, you get some soda. The best part is that after the rules are agreed upon, nobody can change or manipulate them. That's why it's important to audit your smart contracts before releasing a decentralized application. Imagine tickets for a baseball game being sold using an Ethereum smart contract. Since the contract is smart, it can automatically act based on certain events. For example, the smart contract could be connected to a weather app using an Oracle and programmed to automatically issue funds back if it rains. Many Ethereum application smart contracts require an exchange of money because Ethereum is completely digital and needs a built-in digital payment method. In the Ethereum system, all payments are using its own digital currency called Ether. Here's how the platform and Ether currently work together. Every time money is transferred by an Ethereum smart contract, Ether is used for that transaction. Unlike traditional currencies, Ether is 100% digital, therefore it can only be stored directly in the smart contract's code. This makes it possible for the smart contract to automatically send and receive money. In addition to smart contracts, Ether is also used to pay all the volunteers who help to run the decentralized Ethereum system with their computers. Each participant receives Ether since they pay electricity and use their hardware to help run the system. Ether also has an important security function for the Ethereum platform. Decentralized apps have to pay a small Ether fee each time they run and use the network. This prevents people from creating malicious looping apps that are designed to run repeatedly and slow down the system. Because of the Ether fee, running bad programs becomes too costly. The combination of smart contracts and blockchain technology is what makes Ethereum so valuable because it removes the need for costly third parties like Google and Microsoft to run internet applications and to send money. So what can Ethereum do now? Here's the first example, person-to-person -person marketplaces. With Ethereum, it's possible to create marketplaces where shoppers can pay sellers directly with no middleman required. For example, music selling. Instead of the intermediaries of Apple and Amazon, musicians can get the full reward that they deserve. Second example could be person-to-person -person insurance, peer-to-peer -peer insurance. With Ethereum, it's possible to create smart contract policies that are automatically sold and managed on peer-to-peer -peer system. So, Imagine a smart car insurance that automatically charges you a small amount for only the miles you actually drive. So insurance could be cheaper and more reasonable. Now, here's another example, a smart power grid. With Ethereum, it's possible for solar panels to automatically buy and sell energy to the electricity grid. The system can intelligently sell surplus energy during peak usage hours to get the highest prices. In winter, the system can buy extra energy as needed. Another example, a sharing economy. With Ethereum, it's possible to turn the things people own but rarely use into income producing property. For example, if others could use your car, power drill, or lawnmower when you don't need it and you automatically get paid, insurance and theft protection could automatically be built into the systems for peace of mind as well. There's a lot that Ethereum can do. And to understand it, you also understand the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Because currently, the main limitation with Ethereum is that it's transaction fees and the gas is too, the, the, the fees for the gas is too high. And that's because there's a large volume of activity on the network. So the proof of work system where users get paid for the computational power which they do on the network needs to be replaced with a proof of stake system to reasonably reduce these fees. Now, proof of stake is a complex issue that we'll go into more in the Cardano aspect because Cardano has already created its own method to solving this problem. But just to know that that's one of the major limitations with Ethereum right now is its high gas fees. It is still the second largest 
cryptocurrency on the market because of its innovation, right? Bitcoin was the first, almost layer one. Ethereum is layer two, the second evolution of cryptocurrency, and others are being claimed to be layer three, like Cardano, which we'll go into. So version 2.0 is hoping to solve some of these issues that plague the Ethereum network at the moment. And ideally it will drastically reduce gas fees to where applications and businesses can be reasonably run by average individuals as well because paying 50 to 100 uh, per transaction isn't useful when you're trying to send smaller amounts of money or do simpler code contracts. That being said, it's not always straightforward the best method and there is a lot of pushback from the current community of, of node operators and miners that, uh, that are providing the resources and would actually be left out of the equation in a, uh, in a negative manner should we move to a version of 2.0 that doesn't use uh, proof of work. So it's a very interesting topic. I suggest you go do more research before investing in anything and do more research so that you're better equipped for the evolving technology of the future. This is how to defy the system. Thank you for your attention. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe to help boost the algorithm so we can get more people defying the system globally. Thank you.